Hey everyone, how's it going? Elliot here again. I've had this thing now for probably around 12 hours. Um, I did release a teardown yesterday, although people weren't really happy with how far I uh, tore it down, uh, which is completely understandable. I popped the back off and then I popped the metal shield off. Um, I really just wanted to have a look at the internals. Um, I can't really afford to buy something and then take it apart and break it. Uh, but that being said, I've upset quite a lot of people. So I am in this video going to be showing you uh, what the joystick in the Nintendo Switch Lite looks like versus the one in the Nintendo Switch, the regular Nintendo Switch. Now the benefit of doing this video is hopefully so that we can take a look and see if the Switch Lite is going to suffer the same inevitable fate as the original Nintendo Switch and that is of course the joystick drift. This thing was a pretty big problem. I've covered it on my channel. A lot of you guys have probably seen videos on it. I'm going to take both of these apart and then we'll take a quick look at what they look like. Let's start off with the uh, Nintendo Switch joystick just to prolong the potential breaking of my brand new Switch Lite. I have been playing so much of my Switch Lite. Literally, uh, I've already finished two dungeons in Link's Awakening. Uh, I just absolutely love it. I'm so, so happy I managed to pick one up so early and get to play it. Um, so here we are. We're pretty much inside of the Nintendo uh, Joy-Con, the original joystick for the Nintendo Switch. This is the one that gave us all of the problems inside. Funnily enough, I have already seen replacement Nintendo Switch uh, light joystick, so I'll definitely be sure to uh, pick up some of those. Now we need to do the Nintendo Switch Lite. Okay, so now to pop the uh, the back off, the best way of doing this is starting off from the bottom uh, and then working your way up around the sides whilst applying a little bit of pressure to the opening that you've already created on the bottom and just slide that finger around and then you can work on the top. There we go. Okay, the back is off for the second time. And uh, yeah, now we need to switch over to a Phillips screw and there's a bunch of screws on the sort of heat shielding. Um, I said yesterday in the teardown that it would look really nice with a clear shell, um, although it would look even nicer if you could remove that shield. Obviously you can't, I mean, you could remove the shield and you could game with it um, and it might be okay, for like 25 minutes and then after that the switch will just overheat and the CPU will just sort of shut shut down. This shielding is obviously here to uh, dissipate heat uh, as well as potentially protecting it from RF signals but the main purpose of it is to keep the thing cool. The fan obviously blows onto the shield and then hopefully keeps the whole thing cool and also the CPU is attached to it using thermal paste so it will basically dissipate the heat over a larger surface area and keep the switch cooler. So yes, it would look really nice if you couldn't have, if you didn't have a, uh, a back on it and the shell was see-through, but at the same time, your switch functionality would be lowered. So there we go, there is the back off. And now we can take a look at disassembling this portion of the switch light. So what I'm just doing now is removing the speaker. Uh, this thing is actually uh, a sort of an enclosure for the speaker that redirects the sound waves to the bottom of the Nintendo Switch from the actual speaker, which is a pretty interesting way of doing it. On the original Nintendo Switch, the speaker holes were on the front of the device, and on this one, they're on the bottom. So to remedy uh, that, what they've done is just built this sort of enclosure that redirects that sound, which means you're probably going to get a slightly reduced sound quality. But anyway, what we're gonna do now is take off this little connector and uh, we can just remove this whole module. No, we can't, not until I've removed this little screw. Okay, just like that, the little speaker module is off. It's good to know that these things can be replaced very, very simply. Uh, that's the first thing we all have access to. So now what I'm gonna do is unhook this ribbon cable, uh, which I think basically just connects this portion of the board over. Um, although before I do that, I would actually really like to unhook this battery. So there we go, the battery is now unhooked, which makes me feel a little bit less worried about this thing. Um, again, more removable components. The more removable components, the better. This um, 
little ribbon cable here connects these two together. So if this ever got torn or something, uh, it would be a very, very easy replacement provided they actually make them. I'm sure they do. Um, so now we're gonna remove the screws that I can see on this portion of the board. This is essentially the uh, entire control portion uh, for the switch joystick area. So we'll take off that. So this little um, sort of shoulder button assembly is now going to be uh, able to come out. Uh, just be careful of these buttons that are on the top uh, just here. But this is a very, very interesting little thing. So the previous Nintendo Switch had a micro switch for the shoulder button. And they've actually gotten rid of that, which I think is a fantastic idea. Um, not only will it reduce the actual cost of the switch, but also with a membrane and a pad, you're not gonna have any problems with it. And if you do, you can clean it down the line. Uh, but we're talking 20 years down the line. You know, the Game Boys have only just started having problems with their membranes and stuff like that. So, so what I'm gonna do is just undo these little uh, ribbon cable connectors here. There's a few of them. Uh, not actually sure what they're all for. There's also another one just on this side, which I imagine is what is for the actual joystick. And then we should be able to just remove the board and then we can take a look at the underside of it. Okay, there we go. So we have the PCB off. Now I should mention there is still a little micro switch up here, but that does not look very difficult to replace at all. It's just five points to solder. Uh, so that would be a very, very easy repair on that. And then we can see the membrane for the action buttons and it's exactly the same on the other side. Uh, the only thing that isn't a membrane on here and is a little surface mount switch is the home button. So really, really cool to see they've used membranes again. You get a much more authentic Nintendo feel in my opinion. Um, and here is the joystick. Wow, it is in sight. Let's go ahead and take that out and we can take a look at it versus the original Nintendo Switch. Here it is, okay. So here it is versus the original Nintendo Switch. Now you can definitely see some differences in this metal shielding around it. Um, I have no reason to believe that this one would not work in the original uh, Nintendo Switch. And I actually think that's something I'm gonna try um, because if this one has got a reduced joystick drift tendency, then it might be worthwhile people swapping them out. But I think it's fair to say they have focused their attention on the problems at hand and they have actually uh, done some sort of revision to the joystick. Uh, the drift was really just down to the build quality of this thing. Uh, you know, all the different mechanisms they use for the uh, actual joystick to swing back into the middle um, is obviously what's caused the problem. I think they would have just remedied that by maybe using some higher quality components. That would have cost them a bit more money, but uh, yeah, it's worthwhile because then they don't have a problem replacing everyone's joysticks later on. So there we go, I have replaced the joystick with the uh, Switch Lite joystick on the Joy-Con. So let's go ahead and chuck that into the Switch and see what happens. Yeah, look at that, it works, absolutely fine. So maybe it's worthwhile we pick up a bunch of these Switch Lite joysticks and swap them out into our um, Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons. That is interesting. So although they have redesigned the joystick, it's not exactly um, uncompatible, incompatible with the Switch Lite. I'm gonna now spend the next 20 minutes putting this thing very carefully back together. I hope you've all enjoyed this video and it was a little bit more in depth for all of you. I do read the comments, that is fundamentally uh, what I'm about. I read the comments and I respond to as many as I can. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.